I, I want to hear what your thoughts are on the question. Can materialism actually account for or ground consciousness? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. Um, so I think Brother Hans has mentioned a lot of points and really covered the subject area comprehensively, uh, it seems, on this. Uh, how, I, uh, how I also see it is um, when we look at the issue of consciousness, what we're asking is how is it that non-physical things become self-aware, become have this internal experience? How do non-physical, sorry, physical non-conscious things have this internal experience? That's the first question we're trying to work out. The second question is, okay, how do we approach that? How can we analyze the internal experiences of something that's physical? You know, what, what do we do? So normally the scientists will say, well, we'll use science to try to investigate that. And I think as Hamza's mentioned, uh, and also his object, is that there is a problem. There's like an in-principle problem. The in-principle problem is this. Let me give you an example. If I've got a color red, yeah, uh, I've, I thought this bottle was red, but it's actually more purple. But if I've got this this purple Ribena, yeah, shouldn't be showing that. We're not sponsored by them. So if we've got this, yeah, which is sort of the purpley color, yeah, we experience it as purple, yeah. Now, yeah. science, what's science going to tell us about this? Science is going to say, well, it has a particular reflection of light at a specific wavelength and a specific energy. It will tell me the properties of the light. None of those properties are related to my experience. Yeah. So there's an experience, there's an attribute that I'm sensing, which is not physical for the light itself. Yeah, it goes beyond the light, in essence, beyond the physical. So what science is going to tell me is going to give me a third person objective analysis of some reality. But consciousness, my experience of this is a first person subjective experience. And there's nothing about the reflection of the wavelength of light and its energy that tells me I will experience it as being uh, purple or red or whatever color. There's another problem. If I have a person who's been blind from birth and I try to describe that color, this color here, there is no language, there's no descriptive way to describe the color to the person who's never seen it. Yeah. So we've got another problem in terms of being able to describe something because the language doesn't exist because it is first person experience, which means if you've not experienced it or I've not experienced it, there's no way of being able to describe it because there's nothing in the property that allows us to describe describe it as the experience that we're having. And that's not just like color, that's everything else as well. Taste, pain, you know, as Hamza mentioned, you know, see, you know, having a coffee on a sunset after Maghrib maybe with Salah and stuff like that. So, <laughs> you know, this, this is... Uh, so these things we don't any experience, it's these things we can't describe because the quality is not in the object, yeah? It's within our own mind. So the question then becomes, well, how do I access the mind? Now, some people say, well, as Hamza mentioned about this correlation, about how the brain states tells us, you know, if we work out the brain states, we can work out the correlation, yeah? And this is very, the analogy that, you know, strikes home to me, is if I had ones and zeros, which are binary code for computer programs, yeah? Now there's nothing in the ones and zeros that tells me what the computer program is. You need something that occurs before the computer program, and that's the mind. That's the conscious ability to interpret the ones and zeros. It's like Morse code, dashes and dots. The dashes and dots are not gonna give me information What's going to give me information is the fact that I can interpret the dashes and dots into a language that I can understand. So I need a mind before the signals, whether that signals in the brain, you know, the action potentials and the neurons, or whether that is the ones and zeros on a computer. I need something that has, the, has already existed separate from the actual code in order to interpret the code. And the third example, or the third problem is, even if people are able to point to and say, okay, this neuron or these group of neurons in the brain, if they fire, they'll make you perceive the color purple, yeah? But the problem is, is that the ability to say, well, okay, they're firing, 
how does that make it purple? It's like, and this is a, an example that Professor Donald Hoffman said, it's like you've got a bottle and you rub the bottle, yeah? You rub the bottle and a genie pops out, yeah? Okay, fine. <laughs> we rub the bottle, yeah, and the genie pops out every time. But you're not going to say that the bottle is causative of the genie. You're going to say, well, this phenomenon is occurring, and I can't necessarily connect the two, yeah? And that's what's happening when we cause to the hard problem of consciousness consciousness is the inability to you know have the tools in science to access it there's nothing within the properties of the reality or the brain that tells us how we're going to experience a reality and even if we're able to show a correlation between the nerves and the neurons in the brain we still don't have the ability to explain how this first person subjective experience comes about